Hi YouTube, it's Rick with New Camp Knives, and today we're going to forge a knife for a client. Um, she called and said she was going on a hog hunt and wanted a big pig sticker with an integral guard. So, today I'm going to forge her that big knife. I'm going to use a technique that I have never tried before, and I watched Nick Rossi do it many years ago on YouTube, just like you're watching now. I'm not going to go back and watch it. I'm going to go from what I remember and the tools that he used and see if I can work this out at the anvil. So this, this could be fun. All right. I'm expecting to make a few mis mistakes and have to correct them. So stay tuned. Let's light the forge and get to work. Thanks. I'm about to get ready to forge a tip in. I normally do that first on a knife. I'll realize later in the process that I should do the set downs for the guard first. I've since gone back and watched the Nick Rossi video and I understand now why. Now it's time to actually set the material down for the guard. So you go to a corner and you just hammer down on it. And I see my new anvil stand is sliding all over. I should probably secure that to the floor, but I like being able to move it around the shop out of my way if I need to. I'm 
just trying to deepen that choil and the set down. Now here I'm moving forward on the blade and actually selecting the material for the guard that I want to draw out. Here I'm just using the cross beam to actually make that deeper and set that material apart. Okay, moving to the post vise now so that I can isolate that guard material and hammer it back just a little bit more and then start to draw it out. It's actually at this point that I realize I shouldn't have hammered the tip in and should have actually drawn down or set down the guard material first. So I come over to the anvil and I'm hammering away at these uh, two choil looking areas, the, trying to isolate this material. And I realize that I, I need to actually hammer the blade down and hammer the handle down so I can have more clearance to get in there next time. I'm obviously thinking about it right now. Keep continuing to use this small straight pin to get more definition on that uh, material in the choil area so that uh, I can go ahead and start drawing it out at the post vise. Another thing I learned in this process, and after going back and watching the video, is that when I put before I put it in the post vise, I need to bend that handle material or the blade material back so that I have clearance to actually get in there and work this isolated material. Next time I do this, I'll know, of course, but this time it was a bit of a hassle, and in part two, you'll see me do these things. And for some reason, I was not grabbing the blade at the top. I just continued to try and load this thing from the bottom. Uh, I, I also figured that out later. Okay, we're starting to get some definition of this uh, guard. Here I'm going to take the blade back.
this little cross peen that I have here is not a blacksmithing cross peen, but it is actually the smallest cross peen I have and it allows me to get in this area a little bit better because I didn't do that pre-bend before putting it into the post vise. And this hammer is so small, it barely moves material, but it does if you just keep hitting at it. Um, knowing what I know now, this uh, process would be a lot faster next time. Still loading from the bottom, I haven't figured it out yet. And here you notice that it's actually easier for me to uh, hammer into this uh, guard area and draw it down because I took the blade back, the material. This is how I should have started. It's really slow going with this small peen. I do have a one and a half pound straight peen, uh, but it's awkward the way that I have to stand off to the side. But I think if I do the pre-bend, it should be easier with that hammer. We'll see you in the next video.
Also, don't hit the guard that you're purposely trying to draw out with the hammer. Here I'm using the straight peen to actually try and draw the guard down a little bit. And this actually worked pretty well. Hey, look, I'm a genius. I figured out, load it from, flip the blade around, load it from the top. And I will say, I've, I swung this hammer in this video more times than I've ever used it before. I've had this thing for 15 years. As you can see here, that you can start seeing the guard is becoming more and more defined. Uh, it took me a minute to get it here and fix and overcome some of the obstacles I actually caused to myself, uh, not going back and watching the video and how to do this properly. But in the end, I, I'm going to get it figured out. A great deal of making knives and or blacksmithing is looking at the steel and figuring out how to get it to move the way you want it to with the tools that you currently have on hand. Sometimes you may not have the, the right tools, but you try and figure out a way to use what you do have.
during this process, I'm constantly trying to clean up those two, uh, the choil and the ricasso area, both in front and behind the guard, because that little uh, cross peen just makes a mess. Which makes me think, maybe I should take this to the grinder and uh, dress the peen side of this little hammer. Might be more effective and useful. As you can see here, this guard is almost where I want it. I just want to uh, tighten it up and draw it down just a little bit. So I'll do that in the next video. Should always put the hammers back in the rack. I'm using a set of flat tongs here. I should be using box jaw. And that's what caused that to jump like that. That and uh, I needed a little more heat. Here I'm actually thinking about, okay, this is a knife. I need to make sure I'm getting the distal taper hammered in and get the spine to the thickness that I want. So I'll dial all of this in in the next video.
Well, I learned a lot at the forge today. I know now some things that would make it a lot easier to do this type of blade with an integral bottom guard like this. So next time I do it, I'll know what to do. I'm looking forward to part two of this. And as always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. It helps a small channel like ours grow. Thanks.